Alright everyone, what's the story? Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> and to celebrate, to kick off the proceedings, I want to do a lovely Irish folk song about Valentine's Day. Alright, lovely and romantic. I made it through the wilderness. Somehow I made it through. Didn't know how lost I was until I found you. I was beat, incomplete. I've been had, I was sad and blue. But you made me feel. Yeah, you made me feel so shiny and new. Like a virgin. Touched for the very first time. Like a virgin When your heart beats Next to my eye Whoa, whoa, whoa Shawnee, get, 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 give me the guitar Okay, I'll bite you, okay, okay, let me go, let me go, please Shawnee, get, get, go on, go All right, bye Yeah, yeah Go on, skedaddle, go on. All right, all right, I'm going, I'm going. Jesus Christ, that might be. Uh, see you all later. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Oh, jeez. I'm so sorry about that, lads. I have the door locked anyway, so it won't happen again. He won't be back. What was that all about? <laughs> Some weird way to kick off an audio. <laughs> Oh, the worst thing about it is like it was heartfelt <laughs> he was really into it <laughs> so a happy valentine's day everyone i hope you're having a good day today whether you're with someone or on your own it doesn't really matter you can celebrate it on your own if you want you could get some chocolate watch a rom-com listen to love songs or watch a horror movie <laughs> whichever one you want to do so happy valentine's as i said I hope you're all well, whether you celebrate it or not. Yeah, I hope you're all doing good. I'm doing great myself. The weather here has been uh, so so for the last couple of days, to say the least. It's been freezing. It's been raining. But the thing is, like about three days ago, for two days we had spring. We had springy weather. Is it springy? Is that a good adjective? <laughs> And uh, it was very promising. It was very warm. Sunlight. Oh, that. Like the animals and the people were coming out of hibernation. There was a sense of aliveness. There was a sense of spring. Even a scent of spring. And it all looked very promising. And everyone was smiling and everything. And next, it was yesterday. <laughs> torrential rain again coming in from the Atlantic. Cold, icy rain. <laughs> so the spring just slipped away for a while. But, you know. It teased and it'll be back and it'll be welcomed with open arms. <laughs> so Valentine's is one of those occasions where people can either be very happy or feel depressed. It all depends on the situation. If you had a love and you lost that love, every Valentine's could be very difficult. And if you're freshly or newly in love, Valentine's is very exciting. So yeah, it's one of those bittersweet times. It's like Christmas as well can be like that and other uh, occasions and festivals or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, it's the day. It's the day and the end of the day. It's the day and the end of the day. And it just comes and goes. <laughs> and I have some funny stories around Valentine's that I want to share with you. And one of them was when I was a teenager um, I was going out with this girl and my friend was going out with her friend. And so we were both dating two friends and getting on really well and all that. And then one day out of the blue, <laughs> he says to me, do you know what's happening in a couple of days time? And I'm like, no, what's happening in a couple of days time? And he's like, it's Valentine's fucking day. And I'm like, yeah, wh wh whatever. And he went, what about the girls? And I was like, oh. God, because like I was completely gone out of my mind, I just didn't track it at all. And we were after having a weekend, we were out and about and up to no good, <laughs> or whatever. So we had spent all our money on whatever it was probably, yeah, K 
candy and Coca-Cola, whatever we were up to, uh, games and all that. So we had nothing. And we were after getting news through the grapevine that the girls had got really good gifts for us, like really good, like aftershave and yeah, good cards and all that. We were like, what are we going to do? We had spent all our money. <laughs> we were broke. And we were so dead, like so dead. And I was like, oh, I know what we're going to do. Now, my family weren't as wealthy as his family. And so he said he could manage to get a, a few euros together. Not much, but he could scrape. And he asked me to go back and scrape. And we could, you know, box in and see what we could get. So I think I mustered up about like five euros, <laughs> maybe four. And he didn't get that much more than me in the end. I think we had like 10 euros between us. And so off we went on the day, Valentine's Day, of course, as men do like. <laughs> we went into the city and we were shopping around and it was just like oh, futile. You know what I mean? We were oh, every shop we were going into. Everything was just too expensive. Even the cards are too expensive. Like we were like, oh God. Like if we got a card, we didn't have enough for a gift. If we got a gift, we wouldn't have enough for a card. So we were caught in cash 22 and we're like, well, what are we going to do? what are we going to do we're like we're victims of this commercial holiday <laughs> at the same time we enjoyed ourselves for the whole weekend so yeah we're going around the city anyway and the city is about to close 5 p.m or half past five or whatever it was and i was just getting more desperate so we found this store and it was a confectionery store and it was like low grade <laughs> very low grade we're looking around inside and we're like what can we get and we spot these things oh my god lads they were absolutely brutal they were called cupid's chocolate arrows and they were in a box and it was like a cheap um toy box that's what it looked like now and it was a little baby cupid <laughs> it didn't even look like cupid with a bow and arrow and you know the chocolate looked desperate and the chocolate actually it didn't look like an arrowhead it looked like you know signage you know when you see an arrow like a, a big thick arrow like with a point in somewhere so we were, that's all we could afford so we got one each and we're like all right let's bite the bullet let's go back to the girls and see do we scrape this <laughs> get away with this one you know what i mean so we go back to the girls anyway and we're like uh, and they're like happy valentine's day and they come up with the cards the aftershave and what else was there and i'm like oh my god and we've got our hands behind our back like literally you know, like two five-year-old kids like our hands behind our back and then we present the girls with the the underpower chocolate, to say the least. <laughs> we give it to them, and you can see the two of them looking, and they're kind of, <laughs> looking at me. and we're like, oh, the Cupid's arrows, yeah. And like the giveaway is the two of us got the same present, so we know there was something wrong. And plus, they knew then we were up to wherever we were up to at the weekends, so they knew like that we we were after forgetting our. We just spent our money or whatever. And they were like, ah. <laughs> we're really good, really good. And so they they opened the, the chocolate in front of us and they start tasting it and they're eating it and they start wretch. This one like, holy fuck, I can't get any worse. Oh my God. It was the longest Valentine's night ever. And actually they didn't talk to us for about a week afterwards. <laughs> we were absolutely disgraced and still to this day when I see my friend I look at him and I make a motion like I'm firing an arrow at him and he'll just bust out laughing no matter where I see him it could be in the city in a cafe it could be at an airport and I just make the ball saying <laughs> he'll just you know he'll bust out laughing so uh, yeah that was one of the the worst Valentine's experiences <laughs> there was another one then and it didn't really happen on Valentine's Day but it was something that was leading up to Valentine's Day so there was a store in the city and there was a girl working in the store and I used to go in and I used to buy like, you know, I'd have an orange juice or uh, Coca-Cola, wherever like, and it, she'd serve me and we'd have a little back and forth and she was cute and, you know, uh, I liked her and I think she kind of liked me as well. I got that vibe. So we'd have a chat and all that. And at night I'd come home from um, band practice and uh, I would call in and I would get an orange juice or whatever and small little chat and then I'd get the bus home. So this day in particular, it was just coming up to Ron Valentine's. I was like, will I get her a card? Will I? 
you know, when I ask her out and I was like getting the butterflies and like, well, she says, no, you know, all these uh, self-conscious thoughts. It's like, oh God, what am I going to do? So the lads that we were practicing with, they were a little older than us and they had this passion like for smoking extremely strong weed. And I can't smoke weed because my chest is, yeah, my lungs just can't take it. And so we'd be waiting for them. Like they'd practice first and then we'd practice after them. So while we were waiting, they'd smoke like joint after joint, you know, spliff after spliff, blunt after blunt. And the band room was tiny as well, so it would get really clouded and smoke. And of course, you're going to get contact high. So most of the time, you'd come up and you're kind of like cloudy. You're like, oh, am I high? Am I not high? You know, I didn't smoke, so I didn't really know. <laughs> but I knew there was something kind of wrong sometimes. But anyway, it was probably two days be- before Valentine's, before I was mustering up the courage to go in and ask the, the girl out in the shop. And that night in the band room, they smoked so much weed, like I could barely see. It was just like clouds of weed everywhere. And I did feel high. My throat was dry. My eyes were burning red. And I was like, oh God. So after practice, I came out and I was really disoriented. And I was like, oh my God, I'm really really bad here and I had a dry throat so I was thinking oh I'd love an orange juice and over here we have like um you'd have a Capri Sun um you'd have Dawn orange juice squeeze orange juice uh different brands like that so I'm thinking like I'm like oh just an orange juice just to get this dryness away it's horrible so I think I I'll call down to the girl in the shop and I'll go in and I'll get the orange juice and then I'll ask her you know because this is the this is it like I'm going to ask her and see what happens so I walk into the store anyway, and I'm at the stage I'm bombed, like my thoughts are all disjointed, and I, I kind of know I'm high. <laughs> so I walk in, and there's a few people in front of me, and I'm kind of getting the courage up, like to, oh, am I going to ask her? And then at the same time, I'm like I'm so fucking thirsty. I, I need to ask her, but I'm so fucking thirsty. Oh God, what if she says no? Oh my God, if she stands me up, there's people in the store. They're going to look, and what's going to happen? And I'm, well, I'm full of like anxiety, and I, I'm coming up to the girl in the counter, and my body's starting to get tight, and I'm tripping over my words in my head, and I'm like, kill I'm there, <laughs> walking up to her. And as I walk up, I look at her and she stops and she looks at me and there's like this moment that's just a second or two, but it seems like eternity. And she's kind of prompting me. She's looking at me with her eyes out like, what do you want? And I'm looking at the orange juice and I'm kind of like, oh God, how am I going to get it out? And I look through the brands and I see the squeeze orange juice. And I go, that's the one. It's like a, a black carton with an orange in front of it. And I went, oh, that's the one. It was in the fridge. It looked beautiful. And I just looked at her and there's like people all over me I said I'll ask now for the orange juice and then I'll ask for a date so I look around and I go can I have a squeeze please and she just looks at me and I was like oh fuck did that come out of my mouth and I look at her and she's looking at me and everyone's behind the all start laughing and I just start laughing and I bend over and I'm like oh I start busting out laughing and she just like goes over gingerly to the fridge opens it out and she's handing it off to me and she's like <laughs> like it's a like it's a weapon or something she hands it to me and she goes Ugh. and I go thank you <laughs> this is so weird I was like this is the most weird and awkward I ever was so I walk out of the store and I just like bent over like oh, laughing and laughing and I get on the bus I take the bus ride home and I laugh all the way home and I never went into the store again I actually never seen her again so uh, yeah <laughs> it was the last chance <laughs> And I blame it on the band room and those uh, weed smoking lunatics that we were around. So yeah, <laughs> my two Valentine stories anyway. For you. <laughs> oh God, crazy. So, so I hope your Valentine's isn't as bad as that. I don't think it can get as bad as that. <laughs> yeah. So I have a joke for you as well before I um go. I want to tell you a little joke. So before I tell the joke, these stories and the jokes came about because I've been doing requests and they've been asking me to talk about Valentine's Day and, uh, you know, tell them stories that I didn't really share before. And it's really good when they evoke these memories because it makes me laugh out loud <laughs> so when I think back at it. So I have to give thanks to my lovely supporters really really appreciate it and it's so lovely to connect with people as well on a personal level it's really really good so thanks to uh, everyone up 
So Paddy has just turned 18, right? And Paddy had long heard of the stories of an amazing family tradition. And it was that his father, grandfather and great grandfather had all been able to walk on water on their 18th birthday. On that special day, they'd each walk across the lake to the pub on the far side and they'd have their first legal drink. So when Paddy's 18th birthday came around, himself and his pal Mick, they took a boat out to the middle of the lake and mixed up the boat and Paddy stepped out and he nearly drowned. So Mick just barely, barely managed to pull him to safety. So Paddy was furious, absolutely furious and confused. So he went to see his grandmother and he said, Grandma, it's me 18th birthday, like, so why can't I walk across water like me father, his father and his father before him? So his granny looked at him deeply, looked deeply into Paddy's troubled blue eyes and said, Because your father, your grandfather and your great-grandfather were all born in December, when the lake is frozen and you were born in August, you fucking Egypt, Paddy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, lads, I'm going to love you and leave you. And once again, I hope you have a lovely Valentine's and uh, I hope everything goes well for you. And I'm going to give you a big hug, a baroque, <laughs> and wish you the best, all right? Bye-bye. Mm. Enjoy your day or your night. Bye.